Greetings, housemates, and welcome to a special episode in my Let's Play XCOM Art of War series. This is going to cover the ballistic weapon tier and the general archetypes used for all weapon tiers. Uh, it's going to run a little long, like 20 minutes or 30 almost, I think. So let's get into it. Um, basically, in Art of War, you can expect um, two types of weapons. There are crit-dependent weapons. Uh, high crit weapons is generally what I call them. And then there are your standard type weapons. Um, crit dependent weapons tend to do less damage, but have very high crit chances in that they are, you know, it's maybe a coin toss, like 50-50, somewhere around there, or maybe even better, that they can crit a target that is behind cover, not even exposed. And an exposed target is very, very likely to be crit by these weapons. Um, those weapons are the skirmisher rack, uh, the precision type sniper rifles, and uh, the breacher rack, uh, the shotgun, as well as the reaper LMG. Uh, and then the other kind generally do more base damage, don't have quite as high a chance to crit, and, uh, and or focus on overwatch where you don't really expect to be able to crit without special perks. So let's get into it. We're going to go from the bottom up. Um, w starting with the Skirmisher Rack. Uh, this is the smallest primary weapon, um, and this comes with big mobility boost. You'll note that I have these beautiful uh, weapon descriptions. I'm done with all the tiers up to pulse weapons, and I just have to wrap up plasma, and then I'll do the interceptor ones, and we'll be good. So let's talk about how things work. Uh, standard aim is plus 16. This is new to my mod. Uh, I changed the whole aim system so that being closer to your targets has a bigger benefit. You're not very likely to miss a target at point blank range that you're flanking with anything. Um, and shotguns in general are more accurate at longer ranges, uh, but due to their crit dependence, um, that's not, they're generally not incredibly effective at targets behind that aren't flanked or aren't likely to be crit. Um, in general, um, but they still are the perfect close quarters weapon. Matter of fact, the aim bonus is good enough to overcome heavy cover at close ranges. So shotguns can actually, like when you're facing off both in high cover but near each other, shotguns are likely to actually score damage against a target like that. All right, so the skirmisher rack, base damage to um, not much, right? Critical chance, 76%. So it's 76% chance to crit before you count exposed. That means a target you're flanking is 100% chance to be critically hit. Um, the way I think of it is one or two stray bullets is uh, two damage. A critical hit is the whole magazine. Um, attack and reaction range, 27 is soldier sight range. So you're just going to have to look at these and figure out what that means to you. In general, their attack range is a little shorter than your sight range and their reaction range is uh, a little more than two-thirds of visual. Ammunition is two. This is ammo conservation. It gets one extra ammo, so you, you get three from ammo conservation. I really like to display that somewhere. Mobility is three, and the bonus perk is rapid fire. So no, it only has a two ammunition clip until you have ammo conservation, meaning that rapid fire is going to empty it out, uh, which is thematically cool. Uh, I'm considering bumping up their aim a little bit, uh, so you may see aim 16 sometime later, uh, as they seem a little inaccurate. Uh, but that could be, that's probably just rapid fire. All right, so the base damage, expect one to three damage. You don't want to use this against things which it cannot crit against or doesn't have a good chance to crit against, but it's got such a high base crit chance that it's very likely. Um, the target has to be hardened or uh, resilient. Critical damage is three to four with rapid fire and two attacks. That means that you can, you're very likely to score at least one three to four damage hit and the chance to score two and maybe do six to eight damage in a single attack is actually quite high. Um, this is really good if you're adept at reloading your weapon like my infantry class. Um, primary loadout, sidearms gain this weapon's bonus perk, so your sidearms will have rapid fire. Steady aim, brace yourself, uh, you know, to gain plus 20 aim next turn if it's your first action and you don't get hit. That is just listed if a weapon can be aimed or not. Uh, and ballistic tech, this weapon has an increased critical chance. That's just included in here. Uh, and that means the tech tells you that this PDW, personal defense weapon, 
is more likely to crit than most PDWs. So every tech tier has its PDW type weapon, uh, what would have been called the SMG type in Long War. Um, so SMGs generally follow this um, kind of poor aim, low damage, high crit chance uh, archetype. Uh, and then a tactical brief that describes how to use it. I'm not going to go into that because we got a lot of ground to cover. All right, so the next size up was once the carbine is now the reflex rack. You'll note it is still the carbine archetype. Uh, it can also be pronounced carbine. Um, so aim plus 24, that's great. That's uh, plus 16 is average, plus 24 is a high amount of aim. Base damage, 3, so it does more damage. Critical chance, 20, so a lot lower, but still, you know quite likely. Uh, attack and reaction range, 30, 27. Remember, 27 is soldier standard, so with squad sight, this does get slightly increased attack range, and its reaction range is full vision. Ammunition, 3, so one extra round, plus one for ammo conservation, mobility, plus one. Bonus perk is vigilant, which means that you don't suffer penalties on Overwatch, except against lightning reflexes. So that means you're 100% accurate. Whatever chance you would have is going to be uh, when you're shooting at the target normally on your turn is the same you'll get when you trigger Overwatch. Um, where that really shines is when enemies are out of cover, when they're moving. Um, it makes it really likely that you're going to score a hit on them. It's great for catching pods that move into you or catching people um, who can't see you and are trying to move deeper into your territory for a couple extra points of damage. This does not allow you to crit on Overwatch. So keep that in mind. Higher base damage is good for this kind of overwatch, but higher crit chance doesn't make a difference. So the base damage is two to four, crit damage four to five, pretty solid. Um, it's got a tiny bit of reach noted here, steady aim, ballistic tech, and of course it's a primary loadout. All right, the next step up is the, what was once the assault rifle, now the rifleman rack. Uh, the reason they're racks and the, the beam ones are arrays is because they come with this bonus perk that affects all of your weapons. Um, rifleman rack, standard aim, base damage 4, so more damage than the previous weapons. Critical chance 28, that's pretty good, really. Uh, 1 in 4 chance of critting, um, the damage is pretty solid. Attack and reaction range, you'll note these. this is even further range thanks to the high caliber weapons. Um, remember 27 is standard, so both attack and reaction range beyond standard sight if you have squad sight. Ammunition four. Uh, the assault rifle's big benefit is this one extra ammo, this solid damage, and solid crit chance. Basically solid everything here, a little bit of everything. No mobility bonus, and bonus perk is Sentinel. Uh, that means you get two reaction shots whenever you go into Overwatch with this weapon, making it great for Overwatch-centered characters like um, some infantry or even snipers because they have this nice squad sight bonus. Uh, and uh, the extra ammo means you don't have to reload as often, which is great for classes that aren't really good at reloading. Um, but Sentinel, of course, it, this Overwatch is still penalized by the standard for Art of War 40% reduction. Um, so you're really going to have to, um, you have to keep your eyes peeled for aim bonuses or perk combos. Uh, the Rifleman Rack, nice and standard and good. All right, the next step up from that is the Heavy Rack. This is the Battle Rifle archetype, the Heavy Rack. Uh, note the aim is the same as the Assault Rifle. One more damage, which is a lot. That's pretty good. Um, critical chance is 4. Note I have 14 over here because Sharpshooter increases your crit chance by 10%, just no matter what. Um, attack and reaction range, note it's got a slightly higher attack range than the assault rifle and a slightly lower reaction range. Um, ammunition is three, uh, mobility minus one, so it does slow you down in exchange for that extra damage and um, attack range. Uh, less critical chance, of course. And then sharpshooter here means that it gets plus 10 aim against heavy cover, kind of evening out the difference between low and heavy cover for this weapon. The difference is only 10%. Um, so the heavy rack is your best choice for picking tough targets or targets that are in high cover and uh, nailing them. So best given to high aim people. Remember that uh, it shares sharpshooter with its sidearms, whatever sidearms you have equipped. 
um, lots of range, you can steady aim, and when firing this weapon as your second action, you suffer a minus 10 aim penalty. So if you move and fire it, it, gets, it becomes less accurate. So it's best to pick your position uh, so that you'll have targets next turn. Uh, the scope gives you squad sight, um, or a class that naturally has squad sight benefits a lot from this. Uh, sadly, snipers, one of the primary classes that begins with squad sight, are some of the only ones who can't use it. Snipers and rookies aren't allowed. No snipers and rookies. Snipers and scouts, on the other hand, have access to the marksman rack. The marksman rack is the marksman rifle archetype, the first of that kind. Um, aim plus 20, so a little bit better than normal. Base damage 4, assault rifle damage, critical chance 40. So this is what I consider a high crit weapon. It's not super high chance, but it is around, you know, it's hanging out around every other shot as a crit. Um, the attack and reaction range are 42. That's like superior to almost everything else besides a sniper rifle. Um, and its ammunition capacity is three, no mobility bonus. And it comes with the dead eye perk, which increases your chance to hit flying units by 15. Uh, thus the asterisk here to aim. Um, so with solid damage, exceptional range, if you have squad sight, uh, excellent critical chance. Uh, this is a precision type weapon. Um, note that um, it has, it suffers steep aim penalties at close range. Once you get past um, the edge of visual range, it starts to suffer penalties um, quite quickly. It's terrible at shooting things right next to you. Uh, so it, it's worth it to pack a heavier sidearm for characters like this, unless you know you're going to keep them safe. Um, and it's only usable by scouts and snipers. The sniper rack, only usable by snipers, is kind of the slightly larger brother to the marksman rack. Um, so it's the long rifle archetype, sniper rack, plus 20 aim, base damage 4, so same base damage, critical chance 56, so a 16% increased crit chance over the marksman rack. Uh, and its attack range is basically infinite, and its reaction range is significantly further than even the marksman rack. Um, if you're looking for maximum range, look no further. Ammunition is three, the same. Mobility is a little worse than the marksman rack. Uh, bonus perk, killing field. Uh, so this is this grants you 10 extra attack and 10 extra defense when you are above an opponent. Um, so it increases your height advantage. Uh, the sniper rack's a little less useful with less experienced soldiers um, and definitely once you get to the grappling hook uh, the killing field perk really starts to, to make its make its time but if you're going to a map where you're likely to have a height advantage or it's like a large UFO map uh, then this is definitely worth taking or if you have a very stationary sniper build like double tap and the sniper rifle tend to go together a bit better than the marksman rifle since double tap doesn't work so well without um, while moving. So long shot, incredible attack range, long distance reaction fire, steady aim, precision, suffers steep aim penalties at close range, remember that uh, overly precise, usable only by snipers. Cannot be fired a second action without special training. Um, snapshot penalty is 10, so it's really not too bad. Alright, so those are all the standard rifle-y things. Um, let's take a look at your basic shotgun. And then we'll switch over to a gunner to take a look at their special weapons. All right, aim 16. That's the same as the assault rifle. That's standard. They are equally accurate at 16 range. 16 range is just past the middle of standard soldier sight range. Base damage of 4. Um, same as the assault rifle. Critical chance 64. Much higher than the assault rifle. Higher even than the sniper rifle. Attack range 27. Uh, so that is about the same as the reflex rack. Uh, but its reaction range is 14, which means it's just not that good at overwatching, except in close quarters. The just attacks will not trigger beyond 14 range, which is about half of visual. Ammunition 4, that's quite a bit of ammo for um, in the ballistic tech uh, world. And the bonus perk is Run and Gun. Uh, so we all know how Run and Gun works. It's awesome. This high critical chance means that when you are flanking someone, you're very likely to get a crit. Should be about 94%. Um, your base damage is 
not as good as vanilla shotguns, but your accuracy is quite good. And um, with that critical hit chance, we get up to five to seven damage, which is actually on par with the vanilla shotgun. Uh, so a couple of things to keep in mind. Close quarters weapons. So this is part of the CQW archetype. So close quarters weapons gains 50% more accuracy from range bonuses. That is, uh, once you get closer, uh, you start to get more accurate faster to the point where when you're really on top of almost anything, you're going to be really likely to hit it. Even if you're poisoned and you're nearby, you should be able to at least hit it. Um, this says nothing about your crit chance. Poor penetration. Damage reduction is 50% more effective at reducing this weapon's damage. That means that if an enemy has two damage reduction, it actually has three versus shotguns. Or worse, if it has four, then it actually has six. Um, so the damage reduction really uh, racks up quite quickly and it is very effective at reducing CQW type weapons damage. Wieldy, usable by all classes. This is true for the basic shotgun. This is not true for advanced shotguns, but the basic shotguns even rookies can use these days. So um, it's kind of impossible to think of any person not being able to use a shotgun with at least a minimum of training. So um, now your rookies can run around just like everyone else. Wannabe assaults. They'll die just as quickly if you're not careful. So um, the effective range is actually more like medium. Uh, and the way you can expect this weapon to work, uh, you can expect the base damage to always be reduced by one if the target's in cover uh, due to that poor penetration and the innate cover, uh, the innate damage reduction that comes with cover. But you can expect to be able to hit almost any target that you're within three or four spaces of uh, for at least some damage. And the crit chance is very high, so you actually have a good chance of critting against a target that is completely behind cover. And once you flank them, they're almost guaranteed to take this damage unless they're hardened or resilient. Um, so you want to be careful about trying to use this against targets that are resistant to critical hits, as it's just not going to deal much damage. Uh, and targets with a lot of damage reduction, it won't even make a difference. But nice, accurate, dependable, and the flexibility of running gun is just fantastic. Try pairing it up with a command class uh, with smoke grenades, as they can throw the smoke grenade at the beginning of their turn, and then they can use their second action to run and gun through and into the smoke. Uh, not only is that a nice, like, three action turn, but you can use the smoke as like the poor man's lightning reflexes because it'll help protect you if you trigger overwatch while you're moving. Um, it's a very safe tactic and very flexible to have shotguns hanging out in your crew. All right, so that covers the basic weapons. Let's get over to the gunner and we'll come back for the sidearms. All right, so the gunner has two weapons. There is the crit-focused Reaper LMG and the Predator Heavy Cannon. So uh, let's take a look at the Predator Heavy Cannon because it requires the least explanation. Aim plus 12, so it's a little less accurate than your standard rifle. Base damage six, critical chance negative 12. Uh, so even exposed targets, you're gonna have a hard time critting against. Um, that's because the base damage is so high, so good. Uh, attack and reaction range, 42. Uh, that's equivalent to the marksman rifle if you have squad sight. Um, squad sight is available to gunners as a class perk or it's on scopes and there may be other ways to get it. Um, ammunition, three. So it's got, you know, the standard amount of ammunition, mobility minus three. And the bonus perk, flush, which gives you plus 30% chance to hit at the cost of 70% of your damage. Um, note that flush and anti-material, the perk that increases your damage against mechanical units, um, anti-material damage ignores damage reduction and is not reduced by um, uh, flush and other effects that reduce damage. Uh, that means that if you were to hit a target without, without damage reduction, they would take six plus three, probably nine damage. Um, if they did have damage reduction, the damage reduction would be taken out of this thing's base damage, but they'd be guaranteed to take three extra damage, um, no matter what. All right, um, so it's got a lot of reach. Incredibly unwieldy, this weapon cannot be fired as your second action ever. No amount of training can change that. So make sure they're in the right place at the right time. Squad Sight helps so much with that. Um, the point of this weapon is to deal tons of damage. 
Um, you need a lot of aim, but all you need is aim to nail really deadly hits. Um, it's great against targets that have a lot of damage reduction, especially if you're using the damage reduction chipping mod that I use. Um, it's not included in my game, but I suggest you use. And the bonus perk flush, because of the high base damage, it's still going to do quite a bit of damage with flush, which should give it the ability to simply knock off one or two health targets um, with that high accuracy boost. That plus 30 accuracy here makes it incredibly accurate if you're willing to spend the ammo. Um, bringing the extended magazines with this is a great idea because then you can flush twice uh, in a row before you have to reload, and reloading is the bane of all gunner weapons. Uh, but you'll note the base damage is 4 to 8 and the critical damage is 8 to 11, though unless you highly spec into critical chance, it's not very likely. And note that, yeah, this thing, negative 12 is high for cannon type weapons um, because it's ballistic tech. Alright, and the Reaper LMG, the last of the primary weapons. Um, aim plus 8, not terribly accurate. Base damage 3, critical chance 56. Attack and reaction range 36, so somewhere between marksman rifle on, on par with the assault rifle. Ammunition 6, definitely the most ammo uh, of all the weapons. And note the ammo conservation increases its ammo capacity by 2, which is a lot. Mobility minus 2, so it's a little uh, lighter on its feet than someone with a predator cannon would be. Bonus perk, platform stability. Platform stability is if you are firing as your first action, you gain 10 aim and 10 crit chance. Uh, that 10 aim makes the Reaper fairly accurate, and that 10 critical chance gives it the same chance to crit as a shotgun. Tiny bit better. Um, so the base damage is 2 to 4, nothing terribly impressive. Um, critical chance is, you know, good, but not really, I wouldn't say, dependable every other shot. Uh, where this weapon really shines is suppression. Suppression is an incredibly powerful tool in XCOM's arsenal, and this one gives you all the ammo you need to suppress for quite a long time. Um, it also can be pretty accurate um, and a pretty nice crit chance. It's good for finishing off wounded enemies uh, that are in like low cover especially. Uh, it's great with height advantage, and this nice range means that you can suppress at extended ranges. Uh, a little more mobile, and of course it can be fired after you move, which is the big advantage over the Predator Cannon, uh, is that you can move up and then suppress something, whereas the Predator Cannon you have to sit back and take a shot or suppress wherever you are, or you can move. Um, I find the Reaper, because of the way his suppression works, if a target triggers your suppression, either because it moves while you're suppressing it, or you have quick draw and it performs a hostile action, and if a target breaks your suppression, you get a free shot um, that does cost you ammo. Uh, and you get Opportunist, the perk that um, you suffer no aim penalty and you have a chance to crit. Um, that means that this high crit chance comes into play a lot for this, especially if you have a laser sight. Then it means that even if your target tries to attack, you'll get a free attack at full accuracy and full crit chance against it. Um, so it can make your suppression really deadly. Um, what really makes the Reaper is the build you choose for your gunner. Um, the LMG type weapon can go anyway, like pure suppression, low damage. If you get mayhem, then the base damage will increase to five and suddenly you're dealing significant amounts of damage and your crit chance becomes crazy because you'll do tons of damage. Um, and if you focus on, you know, it just depends on how you spec your loadout and your character what the Reaper LMG is going to be good at, although suppression is always a fine choice. Um, remember, you don't have to hit with suppression. You just have to be able to see them. There's no way they can avoid it. There's nothing they can do about it. It cancels Overwatch that the target may have, um, and it gives you a great chance to nail them if they do anything. So uh, the Reaper LMG, easy to underestimate, very flexible and um, suppression-focused. Predator Cannon, more anti-vehicle, anti-heavy, um, with a nice ability to flush and kill uh, weakened or light units um, with that high accuracy flush attack at the expense of ammo. All right, um, we are going to look at a Rocketeer now. All right, the last of the really big items that you can have, the, the Layer Quaker, Layer Light Anti-Infantry Rocket. So this is a launcher type weapon. Um, no, there's not too much to say about it. Zero extra aim, base damage four. This is reduced from vanilla and long war. 
but that's because it comes with shock and awe. Shock and awe gives you an extra shot. So um, the layer Quaker will actually give you two rocket attacks um, every mission just for carrying it. Uh, and note that it can't crit and its attack reaction range is 36, um, which means that it, it can be fired at pretty extended ranges and um, its mobility penalty is three, which is quite a bit. Um, it's a launcher, so it's weapon. this weapon's precision benefits significantly from scopes and steady aim. Steadying aim is key for your weaker, uh, lower level rocketeers or poorer aim. Uh, you pretty much required, uh, but you do have two shots, so you can pop off an extra rocket every now and then thanks to the perk that it gives you shock and awe. Of course, if you already have shock and awe, then you might be doing you might be doing yourself a disservice if you have better launchers available. Uh, of course, you can carry a rocket and a shredder rocket. This is just more ammo um, and does damage based on whatever kind of launcher you're holding. Um, the rockets, of course, you already get two. This will give you three rockets um, as just a baby rocketeer, but um, Rockets are great at destroying cover. They just don't deal that much damage unless you happen to have, combined with them, an HE kit. Uh, because the HE kit will give you anti-material charges, meaning that all your explosives deal 50% more damage to mechanical targets. Um, an incredibly useful item to take on your, um, on your rocketeers to get that, those rockets into the really nasty anti-tank uh, uh, ways. Uh, probably my favorite setup for my early Rocketeers is a Shredder rocket, the two standard rockets from the Quaker, and the HE kit. Uh, this really lets you deal with drones well, as the Shredder rocket has a huge blast radius, um, and though it's heavy, uh, the blast radius and um, nice base damage, even though it's a little bit lower, than regular rockets, combine super well with the um, anti-material charges to deal tons of damage in a big area to a lot of drones if they happen to be a huge pile of them. On the other hand, your basic rockets, of course, are great at destroying cover, whereas the shredder rocket doesn't even touch cover and doesn't affect targets that it doesn't flank when it explodes. So um, best used against flying targets uh, or with uh, some steady hands against um, targets in cover. All right, and then lastly, very lastly, let's go over the sidearms available. So you have your standard Colt M1911. Um, it's your light sidearm. Uh, not all tech tiers have both a light and a heavy sidearm. Uh, most have a heavy sidearm. So 12 aim, you know, aim's not great, but it's not terrible. Base damage two, critical chance 16, nothing to write home about. Note the base damage is as high as the skirmisher rack, but without the benefits of uh, giving you rapid fire and that, and of course the skirmisher rack has 60% higher crit chance, meaning it's way more capable of dishing out damage. Attack and reaction range 27, 19. Um, 27, higher than the skirmisher rack by about three. So if you can't target with your skirmisher rack, but they are within your vision, you can shoot it with a pistol. And the reaction range is 19, just to keep the chance of hitting somewhat reasonable. Um, ammunition, two, mobility, plus one. So this actually increases your mobility to carry one of these, thus the speedier, lighter choice. Um, if you need speed, stick to the Colt. Uh, pistol accuracy drops at extended ranges. It's got its own horrific aim bonus, uh, best used at close quarters against enemies with only one health left. But it can do up to three base damage and it can crit for up to four. Um, against exposed targets, your chances are a little worse than half. Uh, so not dependable. Not usable by rocketeers and gunners, no sidearms are. Ballistic tech, it's got a little bit of extra crit chance wrapped up in here. Um, if you don't need, if you don't think you need a sidearm for anything, got plenty of ammo on your primary weapon, the Colt is probably the choice to get you further. Now, the Mac 10 comes with zero mobility, zero aim, um, base damage of two, same as the pistol, but a critical chance similar to the skirmisher rack, identical even. As a matter of fact, this thing is like a mini skirmisher's rack. The only problem is that one, it doesn't come with its own perks, so it doesn't give you anything. Um, of course, it doesn't increase your mobility at all. It actually slows you down as compared to the Colt. Uh, 
and it has an inc er, do, 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 do. it suffers from the pistol accuracy whereas the skirmisher rack does not uh, so this does kind of suck at longer ranges um, but if you have the skirmisher rack you can think of this as kind of a backup burst uh, from the same weapon as it will inherit rapid fire from the skirmisher rack often I bring one of these on my skirmishers so they effectively have two full rapid fires um, on their person. Lastly, you can build the cutthroats from the very beginning of the game. These are the sawed off shotguns and uh, they bring a little something special to the table. Aim plus zero, so they're not accurate at all. Base damage six, critical chance eight. So far from the other shotgun, uh, this is a special heavy sidearm. Um, the base damage is crazy good but the chance to crit is pretty low. It'll be 38% against an exposed target. Not dependable, but it's possible, certainly. Um, and stack and reaction range are eight, so it's very close quarters. Um, ammunition only has one. It gets none from ammo conservation and mobility minus one. So this one slows you down the most, but it does bring raw damage to the table. Of course, it still counts as a shotgun, so uh, it gains 50% more accuracy from range bonuses, although that's still pretty tough since it has no base accuracy. And damage reduction is 50% more effective, so it's still not going to deal tons of damage um, to the uh, high DR targets. Slug thrower, high base damage, lower critical chance than standard close quarter weapons. So. Basically, this is that one-off drone killer, is how I think about it. Um, against those mechanical enemies that uh, you just need to deal a ton of damage to, or if you need to kill assassination, if you just need to blow something away and you can get close enough, the cutthroat is probably going to be your go-to. Um, if you want that vanilla shotgun feel, where that just huge base damage, then the cutthroat is like a one-off, built just for you. But you're going to pay for that in mobility, as you'll be two mobility slower than someone equipped with the Colt. Um, reload, best on characters that can reload uh, easily, or that have a primary weapon that isn't useful at close quarters, like snipers. Um, or characters that are just going to be out in the front, like assaults. Uh, I Usually, running gun is great with this. Uh, so characters that bring shotguns, sometimes I equip them with an extra cutthroat if they have enough speed, and that's generally how I use it. All right, guys, uh, let me just throw in, <laughs> while I'm here, the um, various destructive grenades that you start off with. The needle grenade, um, base damage of four, thus the range is two to six. Um, Anti-personnel grade that cannot pass through cover, so it's safe to use around your own guys as long as you can keep the, them from being exposed to its attack. And deals greater damage uh, for, and ignores damage reduction from cover, unlike the other grenade, which will generally lose a damage point to cover. Killing a target with explosive prevents collection of alien artifacts, that is true. Damage reduced based on distance from point of detonation. Weight, zero. So this doesn't slow you down at all, but also does not come with a bonus perk. Um, the HE kit combos really well with the needle grenade as it grants anti-material charges damage to the needle grenade. And the needle grenade's base damage of 4 means that it deals up to 8 damage to mechanical units. Uh, although damage reduction can reduce the base amount, not the material charges. So, then we have the HE kit. Now this does come with the anti-material charges perk. It gives that to all explosives that you're carrying, including needle grenades and uh, rocket launchers. Um, but you'll notice base damage is three, a little bit lower. Uh, it destroys cover, alien artifacts, and grants the anti-material charges perk. Damage is reduced by cover granted DR. So um, this one, unlike the needle grenade, will generally do, it'll generally do like, two points of damage less than the needle grenade will to targets that are in cover. Um, that makes it more effective against targets that aren't in cover uh, when it comes to damage, especially things that fly, drones, and things like that. Uh, mechanical units it'll deal good damage to because of the anti-material charges perk. Um, but the big benefit, of course, is giving your other explosives anti-material charges. Um, with either of these weapons, I would be remiss in telling you if you did not take the demo rigging, which gives you Grenadier, uh, which allows you to, whichever one of these you take, 
uh, have an extra perk of, this is a particularly strong one. You'll have two HE uh, grenades uh, and the extended range that comes with a grenadier perk, plus an armor and a little bit of damage reduction. But it's heavy. Um, whereas the HE kit itself, I believe, weighs nothing. Um, so uh, this is a very light setup, very flexible, helps you deal with those early drones, which can be really hard to kill because of their kind of natural defensiveness, uh, that flying, uh, yeah, all sorts of stuff. So um, that covers all of your basic ballistic tech destructive options. Um, remember the crit chance, uh, it's kind of randomized what units have hardened. You're just gonna see um, maybe one in every four to one in every three enemies is gonna be kind of crit resistant. Um, so you're gonna have to pick your targets with the high crit weapons, but they are capable of just bursting down enemies, especially if you take an analysis module or something else that increases your crit chance. Um, the other weapons, remember to mix and match your perks along with your soldiers um, class trees to get the maximum benefit from everything and keep an eye out. And every tech has different sets of perks with the different weapons. Generally, each weapon archetype sticks to the same theme, but um, slightly different perks on different techs can make for better fits with certain builds. So just keep your eyes open, keep your imagination going, and every time you build a new weapon, take a, take a look at the description. Thank you for watching. I hope this clarifies any questions or um, you might have had about uh, how weaponry works in my Art of War mod. And I hope you appreciate how, uh, how much fun it really brings to the table. Like, I have a great time with this. Um, note the sleeper class is particularly adept at using different types of weapons as they get most of their um, special actions from their equipment. Um, and because they get primarily passives as they level up and their raw stats mean they can become very good at using um, various weapons. So, yeah. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this weapons primer and I will see you next time. Until then, my friends, remember, it's all downhill from here.